Goodrex is widely known across the world as being one of the worst roller coasters ever built. I had heard horror stories about people who had experienced this ride, the headaches they came off with, various parts of their bodies just in pain, and most of them saying that they would not ride that again. So of course, I had to try it. The ride is located at Parc Asterix, just north of Paris, France, and I only rode this ride once. But let me tell you, that was all I needed. I can safely say that this might be the jankiest steel coaster ever built. The whole ride feels like the real life equivalent of a child taking a crayon and just scribbling on a sheet of paper. Like you have that visualization in your head? Good. Now imagine riding that. Goodrix will throw your body around a full 360 degrees of motion as you're violently banging up against your over the shoulder restraint through a series of seven different inversions. This is one of the largest of Vekoma's MK 1200s. It opened in 1989, standing 118 feet in the air, max speed 56 miles per hour, over 3000 feet of track. Unfortunately, this is a long ride. It's rarely the good rides that are long rides. It's always the bad ones. I don't get it. Goodrix legitimately feels as if Park Asterix ran out of money to finish the ride and do it right. So this is what we ended up with. Something that's just a poor financial decision. In this review, I'll be doing my best to accurately describe the different sensations that your body will experience when you ride Goodrix so that you can make a decision for yourself whether it is worth it or not. But I also realize that if you're a coaster enthusiast, probably nothing will stop you from wanting that plus one. So the only piece of advice I have to give to you is prepare yourself. So when you arrive at Park Asterix, Goodrix is located towards the back of the park. It actually has a really pretty setting, which just feels wrong. Like a ride this bad should not look this cool. Like you reach this overlook and you're like, wow, that looks awesome. It even has this really cool entrance with a section of fake track that you'll walk under and like right overhead you see some horses and a chariot. It's an awesome picture moment. The name Goudrix is based off of a French phrase that means the taste of danger. And I cannot think of a more accurate phrase to base this roller coaster off of. I truly feel like I have tasted the roller coaster equivalent of actual danger. Full disclosure, I know this roller coaster is perfectly safe. I'm just having some fun. And before even riding this thing, I feel like my overall Goodrix experience just kept on getting weirder. Like as we're about to enter the queue, I look over and directly underneath the ride are a bunch of sheep. Just hanging out, chilling in the ride restricted area. But they did not seem to mind that a big massive death trap was just like flying all around them. Oh, to be a sheep under a roller coaster. When you reach the station, this is actually pretty clever what they did here. Goodrix's station is set up to look like a Viking ship. So you have your bow at the front and your stern to the back and all of your rows for the train in the middle. And I was actually very impressed with the dispatches that the Park Asterix team had on this thing. A Goodrix train was being sent out on average before the previous one had even hit the final brakes. They definitely could have been doing three trains on this thing if they really wanted to. So for our one ride, we elected to sit up front. We figured they would be a bit smoother up there than the back. From what I've heard, that was the right choice. I'm kind of scared to imagine what this ride would be like in the back row. So we dispatch and start up our lift hill, and this is a slow one. It takes a minute to reach the top. But it's pretty quiet, though. You know, a lot of these older rides are pretty loud and noisy. This one's not. So you drop off your lift hill. You take almost a 180-degree turn to your left. And I just want to pause right here at the top of the drop. I imagine that everyone who sees this view for the first time is like, wow, this is really cool looking. What an awesome sight. But once you experience all that, you'll never view this shot the same again. When I see this, I only see pain and suffering. My head is pounding just looking at this. You start to descend down your ramp, which that's really what this is. This is not a drop, this is a ramp. If you expect it to get airtime on this ride, then you are wrong. Zeus is across the midway. I highly recommend you check that one out. And you hit your first element on Gudrix, which is a butterfly. This is one of only three roller coasters in the world to feature this maneuver. The other one being a ride that I think many of you will actually be familiar with, Blue Hawk at Six Flags Over Georgia. That is by far the ride that I would most similarly compare Gudrix to. If you dislike Blue Hawk, then you will absolutely hate Gudrix because it is just worse in every single way. The butterfly is a set of two back-to-back -back inversions that are like ridiculously intense. Like I was seeing gray this entire element. Normally, I really like that sensation. On this ride, no, I did not. It was not pleasant at all. Probably because the profiling of this thing is really, really bad. And there is no seat padding. If they're not going to tear this thing down, the best thing that Park Asterix could do for this ride is give it updated trains. Vekoma has dished out upgraded trains that feature a vest restraint that can go on any of those rides that have that original 1200 track shaping. And the vest does make a difference. It removes the head banging aspect of it. The profiling problem doesn't go away, but at least comfort is somewhat improved. So I had a brief sense of relief right after we were exiting that button butterfly, but it immediately went away because we then plunged straight into a bat wing. This is another element that I really like on other rides. Like the bat wing on Montu and Afterburn, 
Oh, best part of the ride. Here, I couldn't wait for it to be over. And if while you're watching this, you think, wow, that ride looks rough, something I just want to point out. When we filmed this, our GoPro was using in-body smoothening to help make the footage look better. It like dampens some of the transitions. But you can see in this footage how even the GoPro could not compensate for how much jerking around this train is doing. Imagine how bad the profiling has to be that even a GoPro can't auto-correct for some of these transitions. So yes, as you're watching this, the ride is rougher than it appears. After that Batwing, you awkwardly transition into a vertical loop, and then you have a brief moment of peace, you're banking to the right, and then you uncomfortably transition into a double corkscrew. These are your last two inversions on the ride. Probably the smoothest inversions on Goodricks, but that does not mean that they are good. And when you finally exit those elements, you do like a half helix into your first set of brakes. We came to a dead stop and you drop off, build up a little bit more speed where you think there's gonna be more ride, but no, that's just when you hit the final brakes. And whoa, 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 hold on back up right there. Do you see how long that line is of people waiting to ride this thing? Holy crap. They have no idea what they're doing. So Goodricks, the ride's an absolute disaster, a complete mess. I don't know what happened here, but it was nothing good. Park Asterix is an incredible park filled with some incredible rides, and this is not one of them. I feel like Gudrix's days have to be numbered, right? Like, there's no way it's lasted this long and everyone's been like, yeah, that's a great ride, we should keep this around. After Tutatis, when Park Asterix is looking for their next roller coaster, I really hope that they will just notice how beautiful this plot of land is and how something so much better could be there. I will happily kick back on the couch and watch a 4K video of Gudrix getting the wrecking ball over and over and over again as I silently cheer at the fact that I will never have to experience that ride ever again. So for Gudrix's final score, I'm giving it a 2 out of 10. One of those points is because it does look cool from off the ride, and the other one is because it is forceful. So I mean, I can at least commend them on that, that they did come up with a forceful roller coaster. That's cool. So I guess it's not completely pointless, but everything else is just bad. Thankfully, Vekoma has gotten a whole lot better since then, because realistically, this might be their worst roller coaster they ever made. Yeah, even worse than some SLCs. Hard to believe. I know. So let me know down in the comments below, if you've experienced Goodrex at Park Asterix, what you thought of it, if you agree with the points that I brought up, if you think there's anything I missed, let me know down below, and stay tuned for more coaster reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.